All right, I think we're here. We're on air, everyone. Oh, I can see everyone's um, comments. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, hello from Qatar, Germany, Kenya, Utah. Oh my goodness, we have such a range. So if you've never been to one of these before, we'll just give it a couple minutes for everyone to roll in. Uh, we're scheduled to start on the hour. Um, so anyone here really will just hang out. Feel free to say where you're from. Um, hello from Ireland. Hello from the British seaside. Someone else, hello from England. Um, I hear you guys in England have a important soccer or sorry, football game to get to after this. So I will try to keep this quick and efficient for you. Hello from LA. Hello from Virginia. Hello from Nigeria, Vermont. Lots of people from the UK. Hello from Oman, the Philippines, Argentina. Wow, this is a whole crew. So yeah, we'll give it just a few more minutes um, since we started this a little bit early. Um, hope you guys are all doing well. Um, yeah, feel free to keep introducing yourself. You can say what you write, what genres you write if you want, um, or mention where you're from. Um, really anything. Hello from Guatemala, India, Indiana, Florida, Panama. Hello from Trinidad. Boo. Hey, how are you doing, oh. Jordan? Hello. I thought I'd be a housekeeping uh, beaver here and uh, remind everyone to uh, maybe like and subscribe. Uh, what can the folks uh, expect uh, if they subscribe to our channel here, if they haven't already? Yes, if you have not already subscribed, um, we post two videos here um, every week on various writing and publishing and editing topics. Uh, this week, right after this webinar, you will be treated to a video about historical fiction. So if you write historical fiction or if you are interested in it, it is your week. Um, and then uh, there are webinars usually every other week, um, usually on Wednesdays, um, with various editing and publishing professionals for me, who is neither an editing or publishing professional, but I am also here sometimes. Cool. Oh, and I prob we probably should introduce ourselves for anyone who hasn't turned up to one of these before. That, good idea. <laughs> so who are you? So we're not just two random, two random people yeah. doing a webinar. Yeah, just the appearing. Well, anyway, uh, I'm Martin from the uh, team here at Readsy. We're a publishing uh, marketplace that connects uh, writers with editors and designers and all that. And of course, we do a lot of uh, educational content. Uh, and this is Shailen, our in-house uh, YouTuber. She herself yeah. uh, is a writer. Would you like to uh, uh, share some of your laurels? Yes, hello. Um, as Martin mentioned, I do YouTube here, but I also write things, um, quite a lot of them. So I'm a novel and short fiction writer. I mostly write literary fiction. I've got some published short stories. Um, I have one coming out tomorrow, which is quite fun. Um, and yeah, chipping away at chipping away at a couple novels. Um, yeah, that's me. Cool. Uh, where's the where's your story coming out tomorrow? Uh, it's coming out in Plenitude, so that's online. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, follow us on social media, and we'll be sure to uh, share a link tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, I guess as a bit of housekeeping, uh, well, this is going to be a lecture that Shailen's going to deliver, uh, after which there are going to be a couple of uh, writing exercises. Uh, there'll be an opportunity to share the things that you write in these exercises. I'll be uh, watching the comments uh, and I'll drop a, uh, the email address that you can send it to if you do want uh, some of your writing to be read out online. However, there are a few hundred people uh, on this thing, so uh, if everyone sends something in, we probably won't get to everybody, but uh, uh, we will read them at some point, no, no doubt. Even if we don't share it in this webinar, we will still cherish that you shared it with us. That you made the effort and uh, you showed your creativity. Uh, cool. Mm -hmm. just realized it's uh, one minute past the hour. Uh, do you want right. to get started? Yeah, so um, to just quickly run over what we're looking at in terms of schedule, if you've been to any of the past workshops, 
it's basically going to be the same. We're going to do a quick lecture. Today's topic, as I assume you guys know, is character descriptions. Um, and then after that little lecture, we're going to look at a couple examples, and then we're going to do some exercises. So the exercises that we're going to do today are pretty quick. There's not, they're nothing too intensive, but I picked them so that hopefully you can actually use the things you write in these exercises in your novel or a story that you're writing, because um, I wanted to do something that would be useful for you in your actual work rather than just like kind of a throwaway exercise that you might never use again. Um, if you need to dip out early at any point, um, the replay of this should be available tomorrow and the replay should have YouTube's captions, automatic captions, um, if you want to listen with captions. But unfortunately, we can't get those while it's still live. So if you want to listen, listen to it again or listen to the rest or listen to it with captions, that should be up sometime in the next couple of days. So let's jump into the lecture. Um, like I mentioned, we're talking about character descriptions today. So first of all, we're going to talk about what is a character description. It might seem fairly self-explanatory, right? It's a description of a character, but it's not just a description of what a character looks like. It's kind of our visual introduction to a character. So this can, of course, include what a character what a character looks like. Most of the time when you're describing a character, you're probably going to include some amount of detail about what they look like. But it can also include things like their body language, their mannerisms, their demeanor, their facial expressions, their clothing, or even a scene or a conversation they're partaking in. And it's oftentimes these things in conjunction with what a character looks like that's really going to give us an impression of a person. If we just get a few physical traits um, there's not really much to read into, but it's all those other things alongside what your character looks like that'll really create a memorable impression of a character. And usually that's the goal when you're writing a character description, right? You want to create a vivid sense of what the character looks like. And you also want um, the reader to be intrigued by this character and want to know more about them. So why are they important? Now, of course, not all characters are described, not all authors describe their characters, um, so you don't need to write a character description. There are going to be plenty of cases where you just feel like it's not necessary. Maybe the character is too minor, they just appear briefly, maybe stylistically, you feel like you just don't need to describe your characters. Some authors just don't physically describe their characters, but if you use them properly, they can be a really useful tool. So like I mentioned earlier, they of course help the reader picture, picture the character. I tend to prefer to describe my characters because I know that as a reader, I like it when writers describe their characters. It helps me keep track of everyone, especially in a novel. I like to have a visual sense of what someone looks like. I'm the kind of reader where if I'm not told what a character looks like, I just can't picture them. I can't really make it up. So then I spend the entire novel just seeing a vague blur and I have no idea what this person looks like. And so the scenes don't look as vivid to me um, because I can't picture the people in them. So that's why as a reader, I like characters to be described. And so I try to do that as a writer as well. But of course they can also provide deeper insight into a character. It's not just about what the character looks like. It's introducing the character in a way that maybe tells us more about them, and we'll talk about some of those things in a moment. So yeah, character descriptions can be basically a form of showing. I'm sure almost everyone here has heard the phrase show don't tell, right? Um, it's pretty classic writing advice, uh, probably the mo <laughs> most common piece of writing advice. And you know what it, what it means, right? It means that rather than blatantly explaining things, um, it's usually richer when things can be described. So rather than telling us this character is intelligent, we'd want to see the character being intelligent and doing intelligent things on the page. And you can uh, use character descriptions as a form of showing in a lot of cases. So we can learn about the character be being described, of course, but we can also learn about the character who is doing the describing. So if you're writing, um, say, in the first person and your main character is describing their neighbor, we can, of course, learn about the neighbor and what the neighbor looks like and maybe a few things about the neighbor. But we can also learn about the main character based on how they see the neighbor. 
So someone's clothing, just the way they present themselves, their body language, really anything about them can show us aspects of their personality or lifestyle. Maybe they're carrying something around, you know, um, that can tell you something about them. It can tell you something about their job or their hobbies or I don't know, it, can, it depends on the context of your story. But there's more to a character description than just what someone looks like. Um, and even when you're telling us what someone looks like through the language, and um, we'll talk about this in a minute, um, that itself can also be used to character build. So this is all about making your descriptions work harder. Um, I think that that's the general rule with character descriptions. When they fall flat, it's usually because they're not working hard enough in the narrative. One, they often get a bad rep. I think they're maybe a slightly controversial aspect of writing. You know, some writers just aren't a fan of them. They don't like them. They think they're unnecessary. They can get, I guess, seen as kind of vain or indulgent. Like, oh, you don't need to know what people look like. That's just vain. But that's often because they aren't used to their full potential. If you make your descriptions work harder within the narrative, they can be a really useful tool. And I do think they sometimes get written off um, when you can do a lot of work with a character description and with description in general, right? I think kind of drawn out but plain descriptions um, usually aren't that compelling and are what tend to give character descriptions their bad reputation, right? Um, if every character is just described as like, here's the character, they have brown eyes and they have green hair, I don't know. And just like, you just get like a list of traits and there's nothing really that interesting about it. And it just feels like a list of facts that probably won't be that compelling. You know, sometimes you have a character you want to describe really quickly and you're just gonna say, give them one trait just so there's something to see. But for the most part, this style of, des of description, especially if it's very long, um, is not going to do much work. So, of course, let's talk about how we make them do more work. I would say that character descriptions are as useful as setting description, right? Like, I, I think it's not that controversial to describe the setting that's usually seen as pretty standard setting the scene. But for some reason, character descriptions are sometimes seen as controversial. But I don't really understand that because people are usually the most compelling thing in a story. Um, and they're usually the most compelling thing in a scene. So why not describe them? So yeah, what you want to ask yourself is, what can I show about my character other than what they look like through describing them? One really good way to do that is to um, try and highlight something interesting, right? Um, so you're trying to create a distinct visual image of the reader and you want to make the reader want to know more about this character. Oftentimes this means finding something specific and interesting to highlight about them. If there's nothing really memorable in a character description, whether it's there are no memorable things about this character or it's not described, they're not described in an interesting way, um, that doesn't do much work. So trying to hone in on something interesting will do a lot more work. So for example, maybe they have an interesting physical trait. Maybe there's just something interesting about the way they look. I don't know, they have an interesting tattoo. They, I don't know, something interesting about how they look. Maybe they have an interesting way of moving. You know, maybe their body language is quite interesting. Maybe they're doing something interesting. We'll talk about active character descriptions in a second, but if you can describe your character in a moment when they're doing something interesting, you can do a lot of character building. Um, maybe they're dressed in an interesting way. Um, someone's clothing can reveal a lot about them. Maybe they're holding something peculiar. That's probably going to want to make someone know more about a character if they're walking down the street with something bizarre. Like if you saw someone walking down the street and they were just carrying like, a toad, like a, like a giant toad, you know, you'd be like, why is that person carrying this strange amphibious animal down the street? I would have questions about that. Maybe they have just a compelling demeanor, you know, something interesting about their demeanor. Um, you know, that can be hard to 
describe, but one of our exercises is going to focus around that. Um, but that can also be something to highlight. So let's talk about the importance of language in all this, right? This is still a piece of description. And naturally, language is going to be very important in that. It's not just about saying interesting things, but it's also about how you say it and using language that I would say using language that is conducive with the character, right? When you're describing someone, you want to use language that makes sense for that character. Um, and yeah, just like with anything, the strength is often in the language and word choice. So we're going to look at three sentences that are all describing the same trait. So this first one is she had gray eyes like the blade of a cutlass. So the implications here um, from this simile are that maybe she's kind of sharp and violent. And then I put in italics, maybe she's clever. You know, I think that that one is a bit more abstract. There's not a direct link between those two things. But personally, it's how I would interpret it if I read that description. I would think maybe she's kind of clever or cunning. So next up we have, she had gray eyes like the belly of a salmon. So same trait could even be the same character. But what implications do we get from this description? So from this, I get that she's like, you know, naturalistic and down to earth um, because, you know, like a salmon is an animal. Um, so I naturally make that um, connection. But I also think resourceful. And, you know, that's that's a bit more abstract. It's not directly stated. But to me, if I read that sentence, I would think maybe this is kind of a resourceful character who can kind of take care of herself. And then finally, we, had, we have, she had gray eyes like the buttons of a flute. So again, could be the same person, um, same trait. But what do we get from this? So from this, I get that she's like artistic and sweet, obviously, because a flute is um, an instrument and it sounds quite sweet. But to that, I also get the implication of innocence um, just because of the sound of a flute. It's a very sweet, innocent, kind of whimsical sounding instrument. So you can change the sense you're giving of a character quite a lot based on the word choice. Um, you know, we have the same trait of gray eyes, but with a different simile to describe it. And that description can change how we feel about the character being described and also the narrator, right? If this was first person, maybe we're also learning about the main character's world and their diction and the kind of word choice that they're familiar with. I mean, and the same in third person, to be honest, as well. Um, so let's talk about making descriptions active. Um, oh, are they, are, are they called keys of a flute? I don't <laughs> play the flute, so I didn't know. <laughs> okay, um, so one question people often have about um, character descriptions is, how do I integrate them into the narrative, right? I think we've probably all seen, and maybe even written, a description of a character describing themselves by looking in the mirror, which is usually something that you would want to avoid. One good strategy is to make it more active. So rather than just showing someone static traits, showing them in movement. So static descriptions can feel passive and they fall into a repetitive pattern. So here's a um, example that I wrote. And it's just not that interesting. So it goes, the gardener had long red hair and brown eyes. She wore overalls and work boots, a thin scar cut across her face. She had narrow features and usually wore her hair in a ponytail. Maybe this is a very interesting character. Maybe she's a very interesting person, but I don't really get that sense from this description. Like this description doesn't do this character any justice. You know, I'm not really that interested to learn more about her from this and the writing itself is not that interesting it's kind of just pretty standard a little dull the sentence uh, rhythm is very repetitive so what if we made it active and the character was doing something while she was being described so this is still you know not the most <laughs> incredible paragraph ever written but i do think it's a little more interesting so we could describe her as the gardener wiped the back of her glove hand on her forehead and a crumble of dirt dusted the lashes of her brown eyes. Her clothes, overalls, and work boots were clotted with mud and sweat pearled her narrow nose and thin cheeks. She tossed her gloves to the ground and unwound her red hair from his ponytail. I think 
this is slightly more interesting writing because she's actually doing something and you know people are usually doing things um how often are we just standing there in the void usually we're out there living our lives being active here she's actually doing gardening which makes sense because she is a gardener and so we're able to get more um, variance in sentence structure because rather than just a list of traits we're seeing the character in action and we're also getting to see her in her world right like her world is that she's a gardener we're actually getting to see her do that so let's talk a bit about perspective so i think i mentioned this a little bit earlier um but the importance of perspective in a character description is that what makes a character description interesting is often the perspective of the narrator and i think this will be shown well in the examples that we're going to look at in just a second but if you're if a character is describing themselves you can learn about their view of themselves um through that character description and not just how they perceive themselves physically like it's not just like this is how i think i look it can also be this is how, how this is my sense of myself as a person and you can learn that through a character description or if they're describing another character um we can learn about their relationship with this person if it's a character you know that they have a existing relationship with or we can learn about their initial impression of them it's if it's their first time meeting so this is an example of making your character descriptions um work harder right um we can learn about both people involved through the description um uh if if there are two characters in this scenario or even if there's just one so yeah your narrator's biases and perspective is just as compelling as the as the objective details to be honest it's probably even more interesting like this is probably the most interesting aspect of a character description probably more so than just what someone looks like it's the interesting thing is how the characters feel about each other so let's just run through some quick do's and don'ts some general do's and don'ts so do show the character doing something interesting that'll just give you more to work with you'll probably have more interesting sentence structure do use interesting language if the language is dull um it's probably just a weak description right it's just like describing anything you know i think i've probably read books before where i could tell the writer was a little scared to describe the characters because there would be like beautiful sprawling descriptions of the setting and then the characters would be described very simply like they kind of just wanted to like just you wouldn't even notice that the characters would be described they're like um yeah so he has brown hair moving on it's like you can give the same amount of care um to the language in a character description as you give to the description of anything else you want to also describe more than just the character's objective physical traits um, like we talked about throughout see what more you can get out of that description what can you show about your characters what can you learn about your characters and then some don'ts first of all you don't want to have the character describe themselves by looking in a mirror this is a big cliche it's probably the biggest cliche for writing character descriptions of course all cliches can be subverted and if you can find an interesting way to do it um you know nothing is an absolute but i would avoid it if possible just because it's pretty overdone you also want to avoid using purple prose i think purple prose almost is highlighted with character descriptions like so if you don't know what purple prose is it's basically just over embellished prose that doesn't actually add anything like it's complicated just for the sake of being complicated rather than to be good writing um so it's when yeah authors over convolute the prose and they prioritize the complexity rather than the effectiveness and i think that purple prose which usually sounds pretty melodramatic can be um magnified in a description of a character um because i don't know something about what you're describing a person it can just seem more melodramatic so use interesting language but stay away from purple prose um this is the kind of thing that let's say you were describing someone's eyes it's like 
glittering amber orbs, you know? Usually if you're using the word orbs to describe eyes, you might be veering into role pros if there are too many adjectives, stuff like that. And then finally, you don't want to just give a simple list of facts, um, especially for more important characters. Maybe if it's just a character who appears briefly and you want to quickly describe them and just want to say something quick about what they look like. Um, but for more important characters, if you actually want to make good use of the description, um, I would try to structure it so it doesn't just feel like a list of facts. So now let's look at some examples. So I'll admit it was actually kind of hard to find examples for this video because although I can kind of remember which books had good character descriptions, I could not remember where they were in the book. And so I spent a lot of time flipping through books that I know have good writing, trying to find the descriptions of the characters. But I did end up finding three. So the first one that we're going to look at is quite brief. Um, and it's actually like of a character who's not a super crucial character, but I just think it shows some interesting thoughts from the narrator. So I'll read it first and then we can chat about it. This is from The Girls by Emma Klein. Helen, a girl who seemed close to my age, thought maybe it was, uh, though maybe it was just her pigtails. She was pretty in the youthful way of hometown beauties, snub-nosed, her features accessible, though with an obvious expiration date. So this is the kind of example that, um, it doesn't actually tell us much about what she looks like. We know she has pigtails and we get a description of her nose, but it's more about the, um, the perspective of the narrator, like describing her features as accessible with an obvious expiration date, honestly says more about the narrator and how the narrator perceives her and the narrator's initial judgment than even the character being described. So this is an exa a good example of a character description that leans more into perspective rather than like concrete physical traits. So let's jump to the next one. So this is from Exit West by Mohsin Hamid. Um, this is one of my all-time favorite novels. And um, it is it features two characters and um, it's mostly focused on their love story. And so this is a description of a love interest, which I think tends to lean towards obviously like pretty perceptive, pretty romantic because the characters are intrigued by each other physically. And I think that this is a really great um, example of picking out like a really um, interesting detail. So this one goes, she was always clad from the tips of her toes to the bottom of her jugular notch in a flowing black robe. And then there was some narrative that I cut out. Saeed noticed that Nadia had a beauty mark on her neck, a tawny oval that sometimes, rarely but, ne rarely but not never, moved with her pulse. I think that that line is just so lovely. Noticing that she has a beauty mark, cool, like we've picked out a trait about the characters. Um, that's standard for a character description. But then the narrator goes on to notice that it rarely but not never moves with her pulse, which shows how perceptive this character is in watching her. Like he's noticing her very carefully. It implies attraction. And I think it's just a very lovely detail. Um, and it's, it's very well chosen. So now let's just look at one last one. This one is a bit longer. I'm really glad I was able to find one longer, more detailed description of a character. So this is from a novel called Astra by Cedar Bowers. It actually just came out last month. Um, and the way this novel is structured is that every single chapter um, is follows a different character, but they're all, it's about like their interactions with this main character, Astra. So it's kind of like about Astra and how other people see her through their interactions with her over the course of her life. So this is from very early on in the book when the main character Astra is um, pretty young, I don't know, maybe around 10, and the narrating character is also a child here. So it goes, um, the girl grins, shimmies over the windowsill, and then drops silently to the carpet. She's wearing the same brown corduroy dress she had on yesterday. And Kimmy notices that her legs are covered in bruises and bug bites, and her ragged hair looks as if it has been sheared with a bread knife. When she, tuck, when she tucks a chunk of her near black bob behind her ear, Kimmy really notices her scars, the tissue tight and shimmery. She's like a character from a book, like Gretel or Tinkerbell or Little Red Riding Hood, brave, courageous. This girl wouldn't blink if she ran into a wild animal or a witch or worse. So this here is very clearly from the perspective of a child. Like we can really tell when reading it that the narrator is a child, 
Um, and so we get this really interesting um, contrast of how this child with very little life experience sees this other child who is very intriguing and bizarre to her, right? Like she's covered in bruises and bug bites. Her hair looks like it's been chewed with a bread knife. Um, she's somewhat kind of odd and the main character is young. She doesn't really know how to interpret um, the bizarreness of this character quite yet. Um, so I think this is this is very effective in using the voice of the narrator. Okay, so we're going to write some things now. Um, so I mentioned this at the very beginning, but for anyone who dropped in, um, I really tried to create exercises that you could actually use in your work. Um, I didn't want to create exercises that you would kind of just write as an exercise and then never be able to use. So we're actually going to use characters from our own work. If you're not writing anything, then I guess you could just create a character, describe someone random. But generally, like, uh, try to pick a character from something that you're writing, and then maybe you'll be able to actually use this in your writing. Uh, cool. Sorry, I'm just going to dip in. I mentioned uh, these are going to run what, for 10 minutes, uh, these prompts. So you don't really need to have anything apart from, you know, uh, a Word document open, a piece of paper. Uh, at the end, if you wish to send in whatever you've written, uh, I'm going to uh, share the email address for this uh, in the comments board of YouTube and pin it to the top uh, so that mainly anyone who's watching this on replay won't send it to me later. Sorry, people watching on replay, uh, but just watch out for that. If you want to share it, cool. We'll read a few of them out. If not, uh, no worries about that. Uh, cool. Oh, this keeps running every time I change it to the screen. Uh, but 10 minutes sounds good to you? Uh, yeah. So for this description, it doesn't have to be that long. We're going to run for 10 minutes, which should be plenty of time. Um, but basically, all I want you to do is describe a character from something that you're writing without mentioning their hair or eye color. I think that a lot of the time when we describe characters, it's easy to just go and their eye color and their hair color and that's it. Like those are the two most standard details that we go to. And there's nothing wrong with saying what your character's hair color or eye color is. But for the sake of this um, exercise, try to see what other details you can mine when you're not allowed to go to those details. You can describe their hair, but you can't describe their hair color. You can describe their eyes, but you can't state their eye color. Um, and yeah, we'll see what other interesting things we can learn about a character when we're not allowed to use the two most interesting things. Um, Someone says, does that mean not saying the actual colors, but alluding to them? If you want to try to allude to them, but the purpose of this is try to find other things to say beyond their hair and eye color. You know, look at their expression, look at their facial features. Um, other, just anything else about them other than these two things. If you want to use this in your, in your work, you can go add their hair and eye color later. But I'm banning you from hair and eye color to make you find other interesting things to say just for these 10 minutes. Cool. All right. Uh, I'll start the timer. Here we go.
I was not expecting that uh, that noise, Martin, but well chosen. You know, just shaking things up a bit. It's good to keep us all on our toes, so we never know what to expect. Uh, cool. Well, I've picked some people have been sending those in by email. I'll pick some out and uh, share them on the screen. Just take me a minute. Uh, did you write anything, Shailen? I did. I did write one. Cool. Well, I dig through these. You want to you wanna share that? I happily will. So I did mine of the main character of my novel. Um, and the novel's in first person, so naturally I wrote it in first person. And um, I imagined I was basically writing the same scene where she's actually described in the book, where she's reunited with her mother, who she hasn't seen um, basically since birth. And so I ended up kind of describing the two of them in conjunction with each other, just because that's how it is in the book. But I'm actually quite happy with how this turns out. I feel like it's better than the description I had in the book. So maybe I should swap this in. Um, so it goes like this. I had a face half like my mother's, cleft chin but less pronounced, straight brows but more intense. My skin cold, my skin cold, my cold nip skin decades younger yet more scarred. You could tell I had seen wind, frostbite, swarms of horseflies, well she never had. Our square shoulders were wiry on me, regal on her. When I held my hand out for her to shake, we had the same broad palms, my fingernails clogged with dirt and her scruffed with tan polish she must have, she must have picked at on the drive here, her thumbnail almost bleeding and I relished this sh single shred of pain on her. Our straight dull hair was cut to the same collarbone length by coincidence. Mine sheared with a, with a kitchen knife, hers neatly quaffed, quaffed in a salon. I assume I wasn't there, but where else? Cool. Uh, what's it? Is this a, a main character or is it like big character from your book? Yeah, that was the main character oh, okay. and her mother. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, sweet. Let me uh, put. Uh, give me a second. Here's one uh, from Jen N. Whoop. Let me make this a little bit bigger so that we can. I mean, I, I can read it. It's okay. Um, Miguel's. Oh, now it's very large. Okay. <laughs> Miguel's suit pulled taut along his broad shoulders, stretching the confines of the fabric with every move he made. He reminded me of my father when he was younger with his sharp features and vulture-like ability to hone in on your weakness. Ooh, I really like that vulture-like ability. Um, and I see we went for a similar uh, similar thing with the comparison to another character, but I do think it's a very good strategy. It's like really the only way I know how to describe characters is by comparing them to other people. Um, but it often works well. Um, and it works really well here. It's interesting like what we can learn about like, we can learn about the father and the character. Like, there's three people being implicated here, even though only one person is being described, which is uh, very well done. Cool. I've got one here from Jenna, staying with the Jays. She clutched her cane in an arthritis-gnarled hand, liver spots marring a long-gone pristine skin. Her gait was slow, almost painful, yet she made steady progress, determination accentuating every step. This one makes really good use of movement. Um, seeing the character I mean, in action, even though she's just walking, like we just get a good sense of how she walks, but that's so much more visceral to know how a character walks than even to just be told what they look like, right? Like now, throughout the rest of the scene, I'm going to be able to see how this character is moving throughout the scene, which is going to be so visually interesting. All right, I've got the next one here. Uh, from Deborah. Mr. Paul Grimmel sat in his favorite lounger with the attached footrest that supported his tired old legs like two loving hands. The gentle vibrations from the massage feature made him almost purr. I really like that, that um, um, like two loving hands. I don't know, it just adds kind of like a interesting tone um, to this, uh, to this scene. Um, like, you know, I know exactly these types of chairs that you're talking about, um, but it's like just subtly personified as being loving, which is really interesting. Um, and kind of like, I assume he's the main character giving you that sense of like, I don't know how he feels in the scene without ever really describing his emotions. Cool. I've got a slightly different one uh, here. It is from... Uh... A different one? Well, I don't know. I'm intrigued. It's uh, from Roma. 
Here we go. She thought Kyrios looked like a cross between a rock star and a mythic warrior. He was of mixed ancestry, which uh, which belied his um, ethnicity and age. He stood up, his six foot five inch frame towering above her, and took her offered hand. But instead of shaking it, he grasped it and said, placing the remaining palm over their clasped hands. A sense of ease washed over her. He had this don't mess with me in a dark alley, but I can be a teddy bear when I want to vibe. She noticed he had a half sleeve tattoo, rows of black Egyptian pyramids encircling both arms. Maggie smiled. Descriptions of uh, tattoos is, uh, honestly, like if your character has tattoos can be really interesting. Um, I am known to describe a tattoo here or there. Um, and it's an interesting point that I never mentioned earlier, but this description is making me think about it. You know, one of the most interesting things about describing a character is like, what role have they had in constructing their own appearance? Like there are some things about us that are just how we look, right? Um, can't really change it, but you can like, things like tattoos or how you dress or how you cut your hair, like that is a choice that you made. And so it can say a lot about a character. And I think that this description does a good job of, um, well, first of all, like describing a character's demeanor and just kind of like the vibe they have in their personality, but also making use of like things like describing tattoos, which shows us their own sense of their own appearance and how they want to look, right? Like that's something they have control over. And so it's a very useful, interesting thing to describe. Uh, cool. There's loads of great stuff we're getting in, uh, but do you want to do another little exercise? Yeah, um, we could probably go slightly shorter. I feel like 10 minutes, like I just, I was a bit generous with that. So <laughs> we could probably go slightly, slightly shorter, um, especially because the next two kind of go hand in hand. And I also just do want to quickly address some other comments. Yes, that is a chicken in the background. My <laughs> neighbors have chickens and they squawk incessantly. Um, <laughs> it is not my chicken, but there is a chicken. So once again, use one of your own characters. It can be the same character, but it might be easier for you to use a different character. But what you're going to do for this one, and some of you guys are already starting to do it, so it might be easier to use a different character so you have more to work with. But you're not going to say anything concrete about them. Like nothing, you're actually not saying anything concrete about their physical appearance. So I'm interested in how they move. I'm interested in like their vibe, their energy. What's the character's energy, like their personality that they exude. But don't include a single thing about what they actually physically look like. Um, I kind of just want, like you can lean a lot into metaphor and simile and actually the last description, the last um, example that we looked in, I, um, I'm so sorry, I forget your name, um, but the one with the tattoos did a great job of that. Um, so that's a great example of what to aim for with this. Um, and then I'll spoil it in the next example, the last, in the last exercise, we're going to do only concrete. And then maybe you can combine those two things and have a really amazing character description that you can use in your novel. Cool. From my side, if you want to share this uh, with us for us to show, uh, if you put exercise two in the subject line, I'll know how to filter through for it. Uh, how, how long should we set the timer for here, Shaylin? Oh, I don't know. I mean... We could try like seven minutes. Right. I do think this one's a bit harder, so we'll give seven. Um, but you guys will probably be done. But then you'll have lots of time to send it in. So. Oh no! I've actually set twenty-three hours. Okay, here we go. So twenty-three hours to do this. <laughs> All right, and we're off. Yeah, no clothing descriptions. I don't. Nothing concrete. Don't talk about what they look like, but try to describe their sense, their way of being.
Oops, I wasn't paying attention. Bing, we're done. Sorry, I was too busy banning someone from the comments. Uh, all right. Well, uh, cool. Uh, if you want to share yours, I'll have a look through uh, some of the things that people have been sending in. Sure. So I, th I bet you guys did better than this one th than I did. I don't think I did too well with this one. Um, so for this one, I, I moved on to a different character and I described the main character's sister um, of the same novel. And I don't think I did that good a job, but we can read it anyways. And yeah, okay. Named after a goddess, she looked like a child and no, not a godly one. Demure, schoolgirlish, not even grass stained. She was so unmarred, probably scared of spiders, probably so good at never causing disruption. She wouldn't even call for help if she saw one. She probably owned dresses in more colors than I'd ever seen. Otherwise ghostly, Freya had just one sign of existence, a nervous jitter in her left knee. She placed her hand over her knee to try and stop it, but the shiver only transferred into her arm. She was meant to be at a father-daughter dance. She was meant to be wearing a hair ribbon so long it tangled around her ankles. I don't know. That one, I'm like, I, eh. I'm excited to see your guys's because they're probably better. All right. Well, let's see if that's the case. Here is one. Uh, give me a second from uh, Michelle. All right. Mabel never looked him in the eye. Instead, she pointed her head toward him and let her words fill in the blanks. Sometimes it took him several minutes to know she was speaking to him and not to the painting on the wall. Ooh, I have so many questions about this. This is very intriguing. Um, get a really interesting sense for the character, for their dynamic, for their relationship. I would, I would definitely be intrigued to know more about this dynamic. If the goal of a description is to like ask questions, I think this one definitely achieves that. All right, here's one from Luis. She flaps her wings to fly away as fast as a bald eagle, a serene smile um, with her while having a clear view of her surroundings without missing a beat from her speed, landing next to a tree branch, cross, um, cross legs as her mind lingered on the beauty of the earth. This character has, I'm sorry, all I can think is that this character has wings and I need to know why and I need to know everything about it. Although that is a concrete trait that she has wings, so tisk tisk but it is some lovely writing and a nice um nice moment and i i need to know about these wings i need to know about these wings <laughs> i would say that as a reader if her character has wings and can fly to compare her to a bird might be a bit um yeah i'm not thinking that she looks like a bald eagle that's 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 fair i i think you probably don't need to compare her to a bird um Although I guess different birds do, like different winged creatures do fly very differently. Like a bat looks pretty different flying from like a bald eagle. So maybe you can get away with it. Okay, I've got one from Kirsten. The man was a boulder moving through the crowd with a forward momentum that threatened to crush any obstacle in his path. This is just one nice, you know, effective simile. I feel like there's almost like a bit of humor to this. Like it's a little like, I don't know, maybe it's not meant to be that way, and it's just because I'm reading it on its own. But I don't know, just the thought that, like, <laughs> he's a boulder really barreling through the crowd. Um, I don't know, I find that kind of clever and funny and a bit tongue-in-cheek. Um, and I definitely, like, see, like, how, yeah, paired with some concrete detail, you could get a really good uh, character description out of this. All right, here's one from Paul. It was early afternoon and there were a uh, few cars and trucks around and no pedestrians. I lumbered down the sidewalk, a tired, filthy construction worker after a long day of work, trying to look like somebody going nowhere special, followed by my huge mountain man shadow. Trying was the operative word. This definitely does a good job of ex asking questions. Like as soon as you say trying to look like some nobody going nowhere special, I immediately know that this character is not some nobody going nowhere special. And the fact that they don't want anyone to know that means that they're probably doing something kind of shady. And I personally want to know what they're up to. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting that you guys took a different, seem to mostly have taken a more like action driven approach to this. Like you're mostly describing characters in action, whereas I leaned towards trying to describe more like abstract qualities of like their personality. But you guys are doing a really good job with using a character in scene to like teach us about them 
Okay, just maybe one last one from this section uh, from uh, Missy. Cool. He felt her presence coming in. It washed over him like a cool breeze paired with the calm of a sunny spring day. She moved to the chair next to him. Her gait was like a perfectly timed sway, and uh, he knew she timed it well. This definitely also makes me ask questions about like the relationship between the characters. Like this is pretty like admirable. Like it's a very positively framed description. So I wonder if I don't know. I just wonder what their relationship is. To me, it reads as like attraction or respect. Um, definitely like this on its own. I feel like I have a sense of how the character feels about this other character. Um, and it's clearly quite positive. So it's a great example of um, showing. Cool, cool. Uh, all right. Uh, while I dig out the prompt for the final one, uh, if for you guys who are still here, uh, if you just give us a, a like, perhaps that will go a long way to helping us. Uh, and if you haven't already, do subscribe. Uh, but more importantly, like. And then equally important, yes. subscribe. Yes, I would say that they're equally important. <laughs> These are all part of our report metrics. Uh, OK, let me get this next one up. Yeah, and so for this last one, like, we'll, we'll go a good seven minutes again for the last one. But like, try to fill the space. Like, if you write one sentence in 30 seconds, like, try to keep writing. Like, the, the reason, the point of these exercises isn't to just write the first thing that comes to mind and be done. It's to write the first thing that comes to mind, and then after that, keep pushing yourself to write more. So even though, like, seven minutes is a decent amount of time for this exercise, you could do it really quickly in a minute. But try to write for like most of the seven minutes because that's when you'll keep getting to a level of deeper detail especially for this one because we're going to do the flip side of the last exercise and we're going to do a concrete description so now you're going to type a character i'd recommend doing the same character that you described in the last exercise um but you can pick any character and only describe concrete details so no emotion no interpretation like just the physical facts about what they look like and what they're wearing you know so only use concrete details and the challenge here is going to be finding how to use interesting language to describe those details and keep the sentence structure from getting repetitive um, and hopefully at the end of this you can maybe take this one and the last one and combine them and you'll have a description that's a good mix of concrete detail and interpretive detail um, but to really push ourselves to think of new interesting concrete details uh, we're just going to do the concrete for now and it will be best if you push yourself to keep writing for the whole seven minutes uh cool uh also uh if you guys stick around after this we're gonna uh, hang about for a quick q a so if you have any questions for shaylin on either character descriptions or anything else oh, yes uh yeah i should have mentioned at the beginning there's a q a at the end i completely well, forgot about that it's, it's a bonus amount announcement for people who stuck around uh yeah and if you do want to share it with us uh yeah, put uh, exercise three in the subject line. Uh, and if we send it uh, three seconds after uh, we start the exercise, I know you wouldn't have uh, actually done this exercise. So, uh, yeah, yeah, a bit like a... Yeah. Martin will know if you cheated. Yeah, I'm basically trying to scan stuff that I know people, you know, that I get the impression people have written for this instead of, uh, yeah. So if you send me like five paragraphs with, uh, perfectly formed uh, dialogue. Um, I, I may know, or... <laughs> Martin, I feel like you're like the English teacher right now. Like, yeah, I know. Uh, I see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm bad copying this thing. Um, but uh, yep, the email address is at the top of the pin to the top of the chat box. Um, but no pressure to share anything. I see a lot of people are sharing it uh, on the comments and everyone's uh, commenting, which is fantastic. Anyway, let me start the timer. Here we go. All right.
Martin, I think you are muted still. Oh no, sorry, I was uh, too busy looking through the emails again. Well, take that as a... Were you waiting for long? No, like three seconds, probably. Okay, well, here's a, here's a, bon a bonus noise. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, I'm just sort of pulling together some of the ones that are coming in just now, if you want to uh, um, share anything you've written. I, I shall. So, yeah, I described the same character that I described in the previous exercise, so the main character's sister. And just in case anyone is wondering, because you may gather it from the fashion choices, this book is set in the 1950s, um, if it's not abundantly clear from the way this character is dressed. Her eyes were so blue she looked like she was crying. A blue too dark against skin so pale her veins shone through like weeds in a frozen pond. She wore a plaid pink shirt, shirt dress but her stockings were askew, one slipping down her shin. Most ask- oh, I used the word askew twice. <laughs> Most aspects of her were a little askew. Should fix that. <laughs> a knob of dirt on the toe of her saddle shoes, her lemon yellow hair so long it caught in the buttons of her dress. One of her pearl earrings dripping off her lobe like a lily of the valley bud about to fall. She went to chew her thumbnail, but immediately caught herself, balled her hand as if no one had seen. Oh, nice. Cool. All right, I found... Here's the first one. All right, uh, team. This one is from Eileen. Uh, here we go. Kaylin uh, bore the honor of having the reddest hair and the most freckles of all five O'Donnell children. That hair was long, lush, and wavy, but also tended towards a frizziness that no product had managed to conquer. Her blue eyes were wide and friendly, and her lashes needed no help from mascara. With a mouth turned always halfway to a smile, her braces didn't keep her from readily wearing one. Her figure was a little fuller than the average runner, but not so full as to slow her down in the slightest. This is, like, a great example of, like, all concrete detail. Like, this is all just concrete detail um and like it's decently long so like you've kind of gone past that initial you know like obvious detail um you've managed to get some details about like her hobbies and that she's a runner um so yeah this is just like a great example of a good concrete character description oh someone's asking in the uh, comments how come some of these are so long uh to get these uh, shown here i asked people to email it to me so uh one thing i noticed from a lot of the um <laughs> A lot of the ones uh, I've been sent is that uh, completely unshackled uh, in this example, uh, most of the ones I'm seeing feature some sort of description of hair color. <laughs> well, now that you guys are free again, like I will <laughs> describe hair color. Uh, all right, here's. One I mean, to be me. fair, it is one of the most like clear things about a person. Mm, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Well, as someone with like black hair, it's like, and I grew up in a country where everyone had black hair, so it's not something that nobody really considered. Uh, anyway, here's one from Glendy. Emery Slider was about Jennifer's height, but with a curvier figure that she often used to distract suspects just before they found themselves handcuffed face down in a pool of their own blood and slobber. Oh my goodness. Her shoulder length brown hair, heart shaped face, and cupid bow lips pointed to anything but cough, but when she was on an undercover operation. This threw me. <laughs> It began, and I was like, yeah, a little concrete character description, and then suddenly someone is face down in a pool of their own blood. So congratulations on the curveball. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I do enjoy just a surprise turnaround, and then suddenly there's blood uh, at the end of a sentence. Wasn't expecting it. Really enjoyed it. Uh, here's one from Hamish R. Penny sat on the floor with her legs pulled under her, leaning forward on her hands. Her loose raven-like curls fell over her shoulders as she leaned over her 500-piece puzzle, like tongue between her teeth as she focused, her electric blue eyes darting over the pieces. So yeah, this you managed to also like have the character emotion, doing something, doing a puzzle. And even though a puzzle is a very like chill thing to do, um, it still feels like an active description. Um, and it's probably more effective than if you just had like a list and it was like, she had loose raven-like curls, like eccentrics and electric blue eyes, right? It's nice to see the character in motion. Uh, cool, here's uh, one from Tasha. Her nose was an exact repl replica of her black butt ancestors and her face were, wore the same wisdom and apprehension that her elders must have felt. Brown skin showed her age, a record of days passed in the sun. 
Despite being of this century, she wore her body in the old ways. Dark hair covered her shins, uh, puffed from beneath her arms, and filled the space between her legs. A braid of black and gray and white reached down her thighs, another testament of time. This also does a really great, um, like, earlier in the lecture, I was saying, like, what can you show about a character other than just what they look like? And this shows, like, like you just get a sense of how she lives and how she carries herself, right? Like, a record of days passed in the sun that gives a sense of her lifestyle. Um, you could plop this into a book, like, right now. Like, I hope you do put this into your book if this is a character from your book, because this is a very lovely description. All right, and maybe just one more before the Q&A. Here's from uh, Lisa VG. The breeze dropped a curl of blonde hair across her thin face, face. Brushing it aside with a gnarled hand, Jessica turned to face the sun as it set. The glow of sunburn hinted at colors where none had been, her overriding grief bleach bleaching it away. Ooh, at the end, you get that sense of emotion, like the overriding grief uh, bleaching it away. It's very interesting how you've combined a character's emotional state with their physical attributes. Um, yeah, it's really well done. Um, that's a great technique um, that I never talked about and I guess I hadn't even thought of, but it's lovely. Uh, cool, fantastic. Well, uh, cheers for sharing that, uh, the presentation, Shailen, and thank you everyone who sent something in. I've now Yeah, got, thank you so much everyone for sharing. I've got a heaving inbox that, you know, I guess we promised to look at all of them. So that, a good chunk of tomorrow is going to be spent doing that. Uh, great. Uh, well, if you have a question for Shailen, uh, please do send in now. Uh, I'll take this moment uh, to just plug Readsy. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're a marketplace where you can find editors and book designers, anyone who can help you on a professional level uh, to improve your writing, get published, uh, you know, find an agent, whatever, whatever you need. Uh, of course, if you check out the description in the below here in the video, uh, you'll find links to everything we do at Readsy, including the blog, uh, our free courses, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, just check it out. And if you haven't already, why haven't you? Just uh, give us a, a like and subscribe. Uh, fantastic. Uh, well, yeah, Martin, do you know what the next um, Readsy Live is going to be? Uh, I don't know just yet. I'm trying to put one together where I'll bring um, some editors together to talk about what they do. But I do have one booked in for early August, uh, which basically uh, talks about how you actually start writing a book. So going from idea to actually writing. Uh, it's with Michelle Schusterman, who we've had on before. She's fantastic. And we had to post it on the site, but keep an eye out on it. Uh, you'll be able to sign up for that very shortly. Uh, I'll post some comments uh, while we wait. Uh, ooh, Lisa says, thank you so much for the terrific workshop. Oh, I'm so uh, happy it was helpful. Yeah. Uh, oh, Indy asked for random book recommendation. Oh, well, um, one of the books that I um, talked about in when I was showing the examples, Exit West by Mosin Mead, if you haven't read it, you should. It's so good. It's one of the most well-written novels I've ever read, and it's also not very long which I know might be a selling point for many people, but it's very good. So if you thought that example was well written, oh boy, wait till you see the rest of the book. <laughs> uh, question from Alpha Red. Uh, any tips on how to describe characters when using an objective point of view? Ooh, so um, quick um, definition for anyone who doesn't know what objective point of view is. Objective point of view is when the point of view is basically a camera. So it doesn't have access to anyone's thoughts. All it can do is see things concretely. Um, anyone who's ever written screenplays will be very familiar with objective point of view because screenplays are written in objective point of view. So actually, when you're writing an objective point of view, you want to do a lot of what you may have done in the last exercise there. Um, because in objective point of view, you can't show thought, like you can only show thought through basically like body language, like you can only show what can be seen visually. So the last um, exercise there where we were only focusing on the concrete, that's what you want to focus on is just show a character's um, physical traits. And if those traits can maybe imply something else about them, like through the language that you use or like some aspect of their lifestyle um, or body language, that's great. But yeah, it's really tough because obviously you can't go into the character's head. Um,
But yeah, that last exercise where it was focused on concrete detail is a lot of what you would do when using objective point of view. You just have to be really careful that you don't accidentally dip into the mind because it can be pretty easy. But I commend you for writing an objective point of view because it's very challenging. Um, but it will teach you how to be like the best at showing versus telling. Like you will be so good at it by the end. Uh, okay, here's a question it's on a similar vein. Uh, thoughts on first person perspective. How do you stop from saying I too much? So I love first person perspective. Um, probably most of what I write is in first person. I am definitely of the belief that there's no best point of view. You know, I think it's just what you think will be best for your story. And I tend to write things that I think work better in first person. So I'm all for first person. If you like first person, don't let anyone tell you that it's bad or lesser because um, it can be very intriguing um, and immersive. And you can get such an interesting sense of the character when you're directly like so intimately cued into their voice. That's where you stop saying I so much. Um, a lot of it is just being careful and like revising your work to change around the sentence structure. But one thing that really helps is to cut filters. So this is a really common use of I that is really easy to cut. So an example of a filter is something like she smelled or it would be first person. I smelled freshly cut grass. So you don't actually need I smelled. So if you're in first person, you can only experience what the character is experiencing, right? So if the character is smelling freshly cut grass, we know that they're smelling it, right? So instead you would want to cut the I smelled and say something like the scent of freshly cut grass, I don't know, filled the air, something like that. Or even yep. something like I saw a plane in the distance could just be a plane flew in the distance. Um, yeah, readers aren't going to go like, uh, how do you know this? And then you have to reply, uh, because I saw it. Yeah, like usually when you experience something, even with thinking, like when you think something, do you think I thought after you think it? No, you usually just think the thing, right? And if you're in first person, everything is a thought. Um, because the character is thinking the story, unless they're like writing it down or something. I don't know. Um, first person could be, I guess, written down. But yeah, cutting filters is a really easy way to cut I, um, because you just don't need those constructions. Uh, Greg asks, how do you avoid over description? I think I wouldn't worry about it in your first draft, but I think because if you're worried too much about like, am I over describing or am I under describing, you'll just get to in your head and it's hard to make progress. Um, but on your second draft, I think what I look for when I'm pruning my description, because I do have a tendency to over describe, I love writing description, so I'll write just so much description. So what I look for are sentences that repeat a detail I've already mentioned. Um, I know I have a tendency to just write the same sentence basically two times. And it's like, why are we getting told this again? It's the same sentence. So yeah, look for repetitive detail and also look for detail that just you know doesn't add anything. Like if you're reading over a paragraph of description, you know, you get to a line and you're like, how does this help the story? Does it, does it help the story? And if you just are like, no, it doesn't help the story, then you can cut it. So those are two things I think to look for. Um, and, but ultimately like how much description is up to the writer? Some books will have almost no description. Some will be very heavy on description. Um, it's really, a matter of style. There's no like amount of description you need, but if you're trying to prune your own description, uh, those are the two like types of redundancies that I really look for. Uh, Elaine asks, uh, any tips for conveying unreliability in your narrator? Ooh, okay. Well, first of all, we do have a video on unreliable narrators that is probably more articulate that I'm going to be able to be off the top of my head. Um, but when I think of unreliable narrators, the thing that I think, so first of all, I think all first person narrators are to an extent unreliable, right? Like every person is biased, whether it's extremely or subtly, but we're all biased. And so anytime you're writing in first person, that character is pretty much unreliable. But when I think about unreliable narrators, I kind of think about how there's a, I guess there's like a space of potential between the story and the story we're being told. And obviously like the reader doesn't need to know exactly what the true story is, but they do need to be aware of that space. 
because that space is like where the tension is. Um, I'm trying to think about like specific techniques that you can do to do that. And I can't really think of any off the top of my head, but I know that there are some in that Unreliable Narrators video. So I might just refer you to that. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, well, I'll, I'll dig it out once you answer, well, you answer your next question there. If you if you just go to YouTube and search like Reedsy Unreliable Narrator, it should be the first thing that pops up. It should, should be the only thing that pops up, maybe. <laughs> Unless we accidentally made two of them. Now, here's a question from Tia. How soon in your book story should you include a description? I assume, I take this to mean like a description of yeah. a main character. So my rule of thumb for this is that I find the earliest moment of low energy. So if your book starts with a battle, it would be kind of weird for in the middle of the battle, the main character to be like, and just so everyone knows, this is what I look like. It's just gonna seem like a very odd time and it's gonna be really jarring for the pacing. So what I do is I look for the earliest moment where things are kind of calm, a moment where characters are not doing something really extreme and the pace is a bit slower. So look for that sl earliest slow pace scene. It could be in the first chapter. I usually, especially for a main character, I wouldn't want to go too many chapters in just because it can be kind of weird to then get a character description in like chapter five. But look at your first like two chapters and find a calm scene, a slow pace scene. And then usually for side characters, you would describe them like the first time that they're introduced. Like the first time they walk into the room is usually when you describe them. Uh, Sia, one of our regular... Uh... Viewers asks, uh, how many character quirks are too many? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I definitely don't think there is a number. Um, you know, people are interesting and people all have like weird things about them, right? I think the important thing with a character quirk is that it is intentional. Like if you just throw in on character quirks for the sake of quirkiness, it'll feel, the, honestly, it'll feel kind of probably annoying to the reader because it's not saying anything deeper. But if these quirks actually contribute to the character development, and maybe they stem from something, or they say something about the character, then I think you can have like as many as you need. I mean, maybe if you feel like your character has like 20 quirks, that's a bit excessive because you won't have time to like explore what that means for the character. But I think it's not about the number and it's more about making sure that every quirk you give your character like actually contributes to our understanding of the character. And none of them are just like, tacked on as frills, you know? Uh, yeah, your best ones tend to be, the quirks tend to stem from a single thing, just manifesting itself in different yeah. ways. Uh, you know, someone who's, you know, maybe an OCD character will have numerous quirks, but they all stem from the same thing. Whereas if you have someone like, who loves carrying a cat everywhere and also drags luggage and also has a pink hat and uh, also yeah. flinches every time someone says, then it becomes like an improv game. And yeah. yeah, I can imagine that being quite tiresome to read after a while. Um, cool. Um, here's one. I'm not sure. Whoops. Uh, you might be the help. Carolina has asked a bunch of times. Any tips for uh, non-native English speakers about vocabulary? So I am. Obviously, English is my first language. But um, when I was learning a second language, I think the two things that helped the most when I was learning French were reading a lot and getting audio input. So um, I used to watch shows in French and like watch them with the subtitles on. Um, sometimes I even watch them, sometimes I'd watch them with French subtitles if they spoke a bit slower. Sometimes I'd watch them with English subtitles. So it was a bit easier for me to follow and um, I would be able to pick up on words that were unfamiliar to me. Like, um, But yeah, I think getting a lot of audio input is really, really useful. Um, and then pairing that with like just reading a lot. That was what helped me when I was in French. Um, I assume it might also help if you're in the process of um, trying to expand your vocabulary for English. Yeah, I know a lot of people just from, I guess, a pure speaking level, love to reread books uh, in a foreign language. Alec yeah. from work is currently reading uh, Harry Potter in uh, Chinese. Uh, I guess it helps like with a lot of like uh, idioms and stuff, especially things that you just wouldn't pick up yeah. like, when you're learning a second language. That we'll just yeah, that's actually books. that's a really good point i used to also like reread books in french um and it's nice because you don't have to focus on following the plot 
because you already know what happens and you know the story because you've already read it. So you can focus more just on like the individual sentences and language. So that is a good one. Cool. Oh, anyway, uh, this has been fantastic. I might call an end to this because uh, the football here is starting in about 25 minutes That's or so. That's important. Uh, but thank you, Shailen, for uh, coming on. Uh, we'd love to have you on again very soon. And thanks to all of you uh, who have uh, tuned in and liked and subscribed. Uh, sweet. But um, if you sign up on Eventbrite, we'll probably send a follow-up uh, at some point. Uh, if you want to rewatch it, the replay is available always. Uh, yeah, head over to ReadZ, see what we have to offer, follow us on all the socials. And uh, to answer your question, Murray, uh, we're not going to reply to any of the uh, emails that were sent on, uh, if you're just looking for feedback on the actual passage. Uh, I'm currently staring at 400 emails, uh, and I want to get some other work done this week. Uh, but thank you. Uh, it's great that you uh, value our input, but uh, if you do need someone to read it, you can, there are forums and stuff there, writers' groups that you can share short passages, um, and there are loads of you people can also, about that. I'm sure, try to connect with each other in the comments and... If you're looking for people to critique, I'm sure a bunch of you are also looking for people to critique. So, yeah, yeah, cool. We have right. a huge gathering of writers, so we should just like have a video where it's nothing on. You guys should just chat with each other in the comments. That could be yeah, that could be a thing. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Have a great day, everybody. Catch you soon. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone.